Hey, how's it going? So, if you saw my, um, if you follow me on YouTube, you'll realise I didn't get the Laro um, fixed ready for Rego within that three month window of it being unregistered. So, initially I was going to take it to the experts and it still might happen, but what it's done being, now it's gone past the three months and I have to go through a full um, examination for it, it's going to give me time to get a few things done on it properly. So, where I'm at the moment, I've taken off the tank, um, so I removed the overflow fuel line. Um, I believe this is for the fuel pump. It is for the fuel pump, sorry. And there was one other one for the fuel sender, which I need to find. Um, that cable there is for the fuel sender, so I disconnected that. Uh, <laughs> spilled petrol all over myself because the tank, which is now on the floor there. Um, tank leak, I, I tipped it up and because the fuel cap, um, I can't close it because I needed to get a new fuel cap, cap lock. It spilled all over me. Anyway, so what I'm going to do now, I gave, I gave it a, I've given it a bit of a clean. Um, so there's all wiring underneath here. So what I've done, I've, um, what was happening was you turn it on and it can't start at the moment. But you find when you hit the starter button, which is here, whether it's on or in the um, not run, yeah. turning over. But that's not, it's not firing, so there's some, it's like something's stopping it. Initially, I thought it was the, um, this little um, rotary switch, which is for the, um, for the side stand. Um, I can't find where that goes. I, I'm assuming, I made the assumption that it, it runs in line with the um, neutral. The problem with that is if the side stand is down, you'll never get the neutral light to come up. So I don't think that's right. But I read on forums and places like that that um, you need the side stand up to start some of these Laros, and I think this might be one of them. But for now, um, I'm just gonna follow all the cables, see if there's anything damaged or broken which is stopping it. Um, if there, it, I'll, I'll test it with the multimeter, make sure there's continuity, and we'll just go from there. So, after going through all the electrics, we thought I'd chase the starter, uh, see if there's an issue with the starter. Don't know if I'm correct or not. But we'll have a look in here, and you can see there's two cables. There's a yellow and black and a black. And I had to follow that, chase that all the way down through here, and down to this connector here. It goes into this one, and there's different cables. It's a gray and black and a black. I had to then, this was um, a mistake um, undoing the uh, wiring loom. I'll have to re-loom all that back in. That's not too hard. You just start here and you work your way back and you bring, I can bring all that together. That I'm not too worried about. Anyway, chase it down. Uh, the white and black cable goes into this. That's a solenoid valve and I'm not sure what this is I've got no idea and I'll look it up boys maybe but it goes back in there we'll plug that back in you can see there's a bit of um, bit of cor corrosion there but more importantly you can but more importantly, if you have a look, it looks a bit nasty along there. So I'm going to replace this. I'm going to order a new one. And, um, and hopefully that's what's stopping the bike from starting. Um, fingers crossed. I'm going to leave it in its current state because I'm going to order these and try to get the parts delivered to me um, by Tuesday night. So a big shout out to Super Cheap Motorcycle Parts at Liverpool in Australia. Um, I ordered these parts for the Laro Pro, um, my Laro, and they were delivered um, the following day. Um, I know I'm only about 10 k's away from Liverpool, but the fact that they got it out to me pr pretty quickly, uh, very impressed, and now I'm able to get on with it. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to put it all back together. Um, I'm going to put all, uh, put this terminal back in, connect it back up, test it. Um, I'll use my multimeter. And do a continuity test from uh, the cable here all the way to this connection here to make sure I haven't 
um, that the, the connection's good. I sort of screwed up. I when removing this, I bent the little terminal down. Um, I don't know if you can see that, but that terminal needs to be sitting up a bit higher. So I'm going to pull that out, mount it back, get it back into the terminal block, and connect it all up. So it's important that I um, check the cable, the con uh, continuity between the cables. I that, um, especially that one I pulled out, uh, that could be a disaster if I don't have it hooked up properly. Um, because it's beeping, you know, um, you've got a solid circuit all the way through. That's a start. So what we're going to do next is I'm going to um, I'm not going to wrap all this up yet. I'm going to put it back. I'm just going to leave it down low here. Um, just got to make sure that the tank doesn't hit it um, I won't wrap it up yet till I I know for a hundred percent that uh, this real plug it in the new relay will actually do what I need uh, we'll get the bike to start uh, so first things first I'll put I'm gonna put the tank back on um, you know, that's pretty much it I'll plug it all back together and then um, put it on uh, try to start it up I will put this back together first because I don't really need it um, to be a part like that. That's disappointing. More investigation required. All right, so what's possibly happened is the uh, starter motor seized. Tried starting it a few times, just um, sounds like it's seized. Um, you can hear the battery trying to turn it, but it won't. So what I'm gonna do next, um, I'm gonna put the battery back in and uh, try jump start it. Uh, I could hear the solenoid actually clicking, which I hadn't heard before. So that's that's a start. I've loomed the cables up nicely, tied them in, and got them out of the way. So they're back where they where they originally were. Uh, Reloomed all the cable. Um, just wrapped it up in tape, just as it was from the factory. Not the greatest job. I would have preferred to use this uh, corrugated uh, split conduit, 
but um, I might get some later. I'm just going to uh, tidy it up as best I can. We're going to put the tank back on and then um, I'm going to try and see if I can clutch start it. I've got the battery on uh, charge over there and yeah we'll see how we go. Um, I'm not hopeful. Uh, th this is um, looks like I'm up for a starter motor now which will be interesting because I've never removed a starter motor before. So fuel line back on, fuel pump plugged back in, fuel line on. That's the um, fuel gauge. Go up there. Uh, overflow's already on, so I've just got to tighten this. All right, so I'm not having much luck. So I'm gonna go for a small win. I'm gonna swap out the, um, the fuel filler cap. This one's had it, so might as well undo it, swap, swap the other one out. That's the start. So it really has. It's a shame, I thought I had it with that arm. Um, looks like, looks like there was a few problems with this and we're just gonna have to work through them. A bit annoyed after that I might have to buy another starter motor. Well, not another, but a starter motor for it. From memory, they're not that expensive. We'll call that a small victory, yeah? I'll pull the starter motor out, test it, and see if that will, um, see if the start, I'm hoping that's the starter motor. If not, um, it's going into a, into a territory where if it, there's more problems, I might have to refer it to the experts. Anyway, uh, thanks very much for watching, and uh, hopefully the next vid we'll have it running.